But it's a good question because some of my pots are 750 grams and some of them are one and a half pound. And I don't know the difference. So I have to... Uh, uh, and that's go- I'm going down to... Well, that's 10.2. But I'm going to... I'll just take that off. Uh, so my workshop is next to the house. Uh, and this is how I pot at home, except I'd be wearing my slippers, uh, which of course fulfil several health and safety criteria, but they're incredibly comfortable. (coughs) Right, so let's get down to this. So, what tools have we got? I'll go through the tools as as we actually use them. I don't use many tools. Are we alright for... So... I might just, let's see if that's going to, so what I'm doing now is I'm really pushing in with this bit of the hand and they say you should go in with the right hand over the top, well that's fine but initially I need to get all that wobbleness at the base here up so that it gets the wobble out, so the walls are straight, and then I can just turn the top over. If you try and do it all at once, you're trying to push the clay down into the bit that's wobbling at the base. So, that is just that one there, and then that comes in over the top. Uh, Don't be afraid to use your nail, just to take a little bit off, just to get that nice, clean, So that's there. So once we've got it centred, we've got to open it up. And it's standard opening it up. So I'm down to the bottom about a quarter of an inch or just a little bit less. And then I'm just going to open this out. Okay, so I've just opened it absolutely flat against the wheel head. So I've thrown the base wider but the pot is going to be that thin. And the reason you'll see in a minute. The small stuff like mugs, I think I work better with my fingers. So I, this, one, this nail here is actually going, if I give it a wrong way around, but you can see that's actually going to go in flat. And then I'm just bringing that up slowly and coming right the way off. What I'm going to do now is that. And that is the key to throwing thin pots. See how I've undercut it? So what I've done is I've got a flat base that's wider. I've now undercut it. What I'm effectively going to do, if that's the flat base, I'm going to slowly, over a period of time, take that flat base and turn it to the bottom of the wall of the pot. (laughs) And then remember, that flat base is a quarter of an inch. So if I turn that to 90 degrees slowly, the bottom bit of that pot is a quarter of an inch. And that gives me the hook to lift the rest of it up so that it's then all a quarter of an inch. And that's the key. Let's just go through that. Okay, so I've undercut that. Again, that finger there goes onto the wheel head creates the step and up it comes and again next lift undercut and now I can start to think of the shape that I want so I want this to come out like that. So I've got a quite a reasonably thick rim here. A thick rim here will means that it will keep its shape in the kiln. But long term, I don't want it to have a thick rim because a thick rim is like a jam jar, and a jam jar is not nice to drink out of. So I am going to thin that a little bit later, just so that it's more pleasant going into the mouth. So we'll do another couple of lifts. 
Uh, I'm going to go and get one of my other tools now. The U-shaped one. Uh, yeah, that one will do. So, this is just a metal version of a credit card, but it's got a tight angle here. And what you can do with this is, this, this, while I was undercutting with my fingers, it wears your fingernails down. So, I can now, look, undercut, and now I'm going to throw to this fixed rib. And then I can do that. Okay. I can get that thinner. I will just go for one more. So it's a slight undercut. Probably not even that, but I can I can feel it's a bit thick at the base. So here we come. Now this one, I'm now going to roll this tool. Can you see that on the film? Me rolling that tool. I'm actually coming up. I'm coming up like that and then as we're getting there I'm turning that round so rather than doing that I'm turning it like that so I'm, I'm arcing it round so you get a really nice smooth finish you can even go down that way if you want okay then I'll just round this. Hold on. Now that's... Oh, really? Wrong way. And I'm just going to thin that edge. Just a touch. So most of that edge is actually quite thick. So it's going to keep its shape. And the fact that it's doing that is also strength. So the next thing is, because I'm working with the grogged clay you've got to be careful of the grit coming to the surface. So we all know about the little bit of plastic. Uh, they used to use chamois leather, but if you use little bits of plastic, uh, you can then lay that over there. Which way's the wheel going? Come on. It's got a kink in it there. Just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. So I'm just going to put a line. Now instead of putting a line there, I could put a just a spiral down. Or if I wanted to, to make it a little bit more funky, I'm going to put a wavy line around it. So okay. But because I've got a line here. I want to mirror it with a line down there. It just makes it a bit more pleasant. But it also means when I'm glazing, this is the line that I wax to, I clean the pot to, this is where I glaze to. So again, whoop, you've got to get the speed right, which is a bit difficult when you've never used a wheel before. There we go. See how that matches that? And you can just clean the inside. Now, then all I would do then is take the, uh, wire it through. Remember, this would be on the bat. That's a nice round one. You can make it completely different just by doing that. I'll just put three on. So here, you would put the handle here so that it would match so that's why actually that's wrong because that would be very awkward to look at that needs to be four so that it's all right having three on a bowl as we'll see later on but on a mug where you're actually going to put a handle you need four so that the when the mug go, when the handle goes on it's Symmetrical for both left and right handed people. So again, design. So what I want to do is I want to do that and then I'm just going to oh, cut it through, didn't I? 
Come on, I want to show you how. There we go. I'll check it looks all right first before I. Right, yeah. So you can see, if I point to the camera, how that is almost thin. I think if I was doing that back at the workshop, I'd done another pull. Okay, let's just do that lifting again. I'll make a different shape this time. And lift like that, undercutting. So it's flat in the mid, down at the base. So I'm now undercutting that. Oops, wrong way. Undercutting that. And that's undercutting is lifting that clay up from the base to the wall and giving me that, oh, let me try that that way. It's giving me that hook under there to lift. Right, let's talk about handles. Now, handles, I spent a Sunday, I can remember it in my old workshop, I spent Sunday afternoon and I put two handles on a mug. And you know what you do? You grab it and you, you make that wad of clay and then you bring it into a slug and then you leave it to dry. Let's get a mug. We've got some here. And just clean it up. And it will be like that. I have a little teaspoon... And I, and I use the back of the teaspoon and I do that and I can press that clay so it's lovely and smooth and then I do that and it's finished so that's the mug right now then my handle here's my clay So the handles, you know you've got to, you know you've got to do the slug, and you've got to pull it and pull it and pull it. Did you notice how quickly I did that? Is that clay tired? No, that clay is in absolute perfect condition. So what I then do is I. I cut the end off. All my handles, they come out of the, the, the body of the pot and width-wise... Oh, hold on, let's get it in focus. I can. Wider. So they're like the branch of a tree. A branch doesn't come off a tree just stuck on. It comes out and flows out. So I've got the slug now. So I now tap the end there and it's getting a bit thicker. Oops, there we go. Okay, on the camera. There we go. And then I thin it at the edge a bit. And with a pin, I haven't got a pin, but I would just score that. And I would score this, again, on that line. Do you remember me talking about the, the importance of that line? So I'm going to, uh, the, the, the handle is going to leap from that line. I'd spend a bit more care than that. I'll put a little bit of slip. Yeah, like that. And then, I'll push that onto there. Bring it up here resting and then just work it in okay everybody happy and then you can do that <laughs> and I can do that because the clay isn't tied I'm, it's actually a little bit wet actually, I, I'm, 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 I'm tempted to feel that it's actually going to give way and fall <laughs> it's, I would normally cut those out and leave them an hour and then it is 
simply one, two, three, four, five, round and in, down and finish off. Oops. Yeah. And look. It's nice that way. The camera that way. Growing out. And it's nice that way. Coming in here. Thinking outside the box, we can now take... <laughs> eh? So... I've now got a handle folded round would go on the side of a casserole you can take that you can roll it up and there's the most beautiful casserole lid so the next thing you can do with handles uh, oh the other thing you can do with this if we look at the clay and we mark it and I mark a third like that so I'm going to drag it Straight there. And when I get to here, I'm going to drag the tool like that and then out. And it's called Jigger Jigger. Because <laughs> you've got it again, it, it, so it's one off. When you start, you can't stop. So it's in, Jigger, Jigger, Jigger. I normally get the kids in the audience to shout out at this <laughs> point. Now, if you're doing a bowl and you want to handle over the bowl... That is lovely. So, building on from the mug where you've made it, I like to play with it. Building feet on it can actually lift it up and give it a completely different character. And again, necessity is the mother of invention. Then what I have got is my tool here. So it will put a texture into the clay. I then twist it on itself. So I've now got that nice surface there. And I would make four of those. And then I would just attach them to the mug. One of the things I do do, which I haven't mentioned, is that a lot of people, including me, use a mug in the kitchen with wet hands. You should never do that, by the way. Okay. So, I use, so I always put a thumb grip on mine. So with a wet hand, I can still grab that and it will not fall out of my hand. Without otherwise, because on that, with, especially with the glaze that's got a high gloss surface, <coughs> your fingers just slip round. That locks it tight. So, there we are. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.